This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to sign up using the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. It seems that politics is unrelenting at the moment. Right after Truss's Chancellor announced the mini-budget, the markets responded negatively, prompting huge speculation about U-turns and resignations. In an attempt to quell the dissent and prevent the economy getting worse, Truss has had to make a couple of hugely embarrassing U-turns, including the announcement on Friday that she would be increasing corporation tax after all, something she promised she wouldn't do when she ran for the Conservative Party leadership election. In fact, this was one of her big policies that set her aside from Sunak. Even this, though, wasn't enough, and on Friday, she asked her Chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, to resign. So, how did we get here? Where does the country go from here? We'll just make it to Christmas as Prime Minister. Let's have a look. The next couple of weeks are going to be pretty chaotic, so be sure to subscribe for all the explainers and updates. Thanks. In essence, this all happened because of the mini-budget. Kwarteng and Truss introduced this on September the 23rd, mere weeks after Truss became Prime Minister, and days after the end of the official mourning period for the Queen. It contained some absolute bombshells, including a cut in the basic rate of income tax, the abolition of the 45% additional rate of income tax, the reversal of the 1.25% national insurance rise, a rise in the stamp duty threshold, and scrapping the limits on bankers' bonuses. In essence, it was a gargantuan tax-cutting plan. Trust could have expected the markets to be, perhaps, hesitant, but there's no way she could have predicted what followed. The pound started to fall through the day, dropping against the dollar to below $1.09. Three days later, on the 26th of September, the pound hit the lowest level against the dollar since decimalisation in 1971. In addition to this, yields on five-year government bonds had their largest increase in any single day on record. In response to the volatility, the Bank of England announced that they would begin purchasing UK government bonds for two weeks in an attempt to calm the markets, because without doing so would mean the risk of the collapse of a number of pension funds. On the 30th of September, a new election poll put Labour on a 33-point lead. This was the largest lead of any party since the late 1990s. In an attempt to try and calm the situation, on the 3rd of October, the government committed to a U-turn on scrapping the 45% top rate of income tax. This did little to calm anyone, and the polls reinforced themselves, with further polls suggesting that a roughly 30-point lead was sustained. Then, in a further attempt to calm the markets, her Chancellor changed the date of his medium-term fiscal plan. Basically, this was when he was going to announce that he was going to reduce UK debt in an attempt to reassure the market that there would be supply-side reform. Originally, this was scheduled for November the 23rd, and then this was brought forward to the 31st of October. Even this wasn't enough to steady the ship, though. Speculation continued to rise that Truss would have to U-turn further on the mini-budget itself. This all came to a head last Friday when it became clear that Truss was about to potentially reinstate the increase in corporation tax. We heard in the morning that Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng was instructed by Truss to get on a plane back to the UK. Some thought this might be to discuss next steps on the U-turn with him, or potentially to give him the sack. As it turns out, it was the latter. Truss swiftly installed Jeremy Hunt, who confirmed that the government would be performing yet another U-turn to increase corporation tax from 19 to 25 per cent. Originally, this was a Boris Johnson policy, but Truss promised to scrap it during her leadership campaign. On Monday, just three days after his appointment, Hunt then made a statement announcing the government would be reversing basically every measure in the original mini-budget, except for the planned abolition of the health and social care levy, and the reduction in stamp duty. In practice, this means U-turns on, changes to dividend tax rates, reversal of off-payroll working reforms, VAT-free shopping scheme for non-UK visitors, freeze on alcohol VAT rates, and the much-anticipated 1p drop in the basic rate of income tax to 19%. Hunt also announced that the energy price guarantee, which was originally due to last for two years, would only last for six months, before being replaced with a new scheme that would be, quote, targeted and better incentivise energy efficiency, i.e. less generous. On top of that, Hunt warned that, in order to reduce public expenditure, 
all departments will need to, quote, redouble their effort to find savings, and some areas of spending will need to be cut. This directly contradicted what Truss said in the chamber on Wednesday, when she promised that spending wouldn't be cut. Hunt finished his statement by announcing that the government would, quote, take whatever tough decisions are necessary to stabilise public finances, in what looked like a thinly veiled reference to Mario Draghi's famous whatever it takes statement in response to market pressure on European borrowing costs. While Hunt's statement went down well with the financial markets, both the pound and gilt prices rallied on the news. It's made Truss's position pretty much untenable. Hunt is clearly the de facto Prime Minister. In basically three days, he's reversed almost all of Truss's budget and directly contradicted what she said in the chamber. On top of that, she now has to preside over further spending cuts, which are going to be deeply unpopular given the current state of the UK's public finances. Truss's approval ratings are already at historic lows, and it's hard to see how she survives the coming spending cuts. This is why many are starting to question whether Truss will actually survive the next few weeks as Prime Minister. Now, while there are no real formal mechanisms to get rid of her, she has a 12-month grace period from being officially ousted by her backbenches, and the Tories have too large a majority for the government to lose a no-confidence vote, some have suggested that she could simply be under pressure to resign. This is, in effect, what happened to both May and Johnson. They both won their respective no-confidence votes and were simply overwhelmed by the pressure to go. Hunt will need to, very quickly, reassure markets that the Tories will not be moving as quickly as previously assumed, and the polls will need to change much more in the Tories' favour if Truss is to stand any chance of surviving. If she is removed, though, it's not likely that even this will help the Tories' current sticky situation. The Prime Minister would be twice removed from who was elected back in 2019, and the country would be screaming out for another general election. As we said, if Truss is removed, bad polling would at least be part of the reason, so it's hard to see how the Tories could fare well in a general election. It's clear then that no matter what happens, the Tories are likely to be stuck between a rock and a hard place. This will be a very tough decision for the Conservatives to make, and to be honest, they may not make the decision that you or I think is best. So it would be great if politicians were better at, well, decision-making and finance. Fortunately, they could do that easily if they signed up to Brilliant, the STEM learning platform where you can learn everything from quantum computing or algebra to logical decision-making, a skill severely lacking at the moment. Their logical thinking course might start simple, but it builds teaching you logical reasoning skills until you're solving problems which previously looked impossible. You'll get used to that empowering feeling of learning too, because this isn't just about memorization and lectures. Brilliant teaches you by doing, using active learning techniques to teach you the principles behind otherwise complex subjects, and ensuring you actually understand what's going on. Using this teaching methodology, you can learn about all kinds of STEM topics. That's algebra, applied probability, calculus, gravitational physics, and even cryptocurrency. In fact, they even have a new course from Kurtzgesagt, which I've got to say I found very personally exciting and spent a lot of time playing with. Anyway, if you want to learn in a more fun way, then you should sign up to Brilliant, and the link in the description will get you 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is not only a great deal, but supports the channel. So, thanks.